it, it definitely will be a very big challenge. Whether it's the greatest challenge or one of the greatest ones, nobody nobody knows. But uh, but probably it, it, it will be next to food security, next to energy security, next to the security of uh, marine resources use. Fresh water is going to, to cause a, a, a major concern. It already does, as a matter of fact. Many people are talking about uh, a looming water crisis. And if you, if you look at the, the mass statistical numbers, you know, every day there are 6,000 children who are killed by water, every day. Then uh, if you look at the past 35 years, the per capita water availability has reduced from 13,000 cubic meter per person per year down to 5,000 cubic meter per person per year, less than half. So if you make a linear projection, that would mean that in 35 years' time we are running out of water. Of course, it will not happen because the hydrological cycle is, is a cycle that is renewed all the time with other geochemical uh, cycles. But if you look at that, uh, that uh, just in, 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 in case of the Millennium Development Goals, which are coming to an end in two years' time, the two water-related goals, one is on water supply, uh, which was agreed by governments at the, at the Millennium Assembly, the UN General Assembly, and they agreed that by 2015, they will halve the number of human beings who have no access to safe drinking water. We are pretty much on track, globally. But what is much worse, unfortunately, is the sanitation situation. In the same, uh, at the same uh, General Assembly, the member states agreed that they will halve the number of those human beings who have no access to, to improve sanitation. Okay. The third uh, issue, what I perhaps might mention, is the impacts of climate variability and climate change. If you look at the devastating floods that seem to occur in an increasing frequency, the scientific community is coming to the conclusion that all the assumptions upon which engineering experience is the same, they seem to change. The flood frequencies are increasing. It seems like the hydrological cycle is, is increasing. So if you want to have uh, security against floods or droughts on the other hand, you have to start thinking about it now. Latin America was was giving uh, examples of to more modern, modern water management. For instance, Brazil has created the, the water law, which is one of the most progressive water laws in the world, the legal system with respect to how do you govern water, with, together with South Africa. Or if you look at this country, the Uruguay, Uruguay was the first country in the whole world that has enshrined in its constitution the access to water uh, because without water, you just cannot exist. So in that regard, uh, this continent has shown a, a great deal of positive examples. Also cooperation over transboundary water resources. We are sitting uh, on one of the biggest aquifers of the world, the Guarani aquifer, which is shared by Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and uh, And there is work, uh, a coordinated work, on how to use jointly uh, that aquifer. Latin America will probably be one of those continents which will not suffer uh, as badly from the water shortages or from the disasters of water as, uh, as the other continents. Although I have to say immediately that, for instance, two years ago, the, the torrent floods in Rio de Janeiro, they caused havoc. Uh, and that again was pointing to the fact that the flood frequencies seem to, to, seem to increase.
the, the importance of the aquifers cannot be overemphasized. It, it's a huge resource. 90% of the unfrozen water is under the ground. 90%. So if 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 that it, it's a it, it it's really a uh, it's our 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 our, our safety uh, for the future. But unfortunately, these groundwater resources are extremely vulnerable. So once it is polluted, it's polluted almost forever. Because of these processes for self-purification, you cannot take out water uh, from the aquifer. It's a huge, huge, hundreds of cubic kilometers. You just cannot take them out like you clean a river uh, and, and you clean, uh, you know, polluted water, surface water. It's, it's easy, we have the technology. But for groundwater, we don't. So therefore, groundwater resources need to be protected in a very specific uh, way for the future generation as well. That is uh, why this cooperation for the Look at human history, it has rarely happened that there was an open military conflict for water. Very few. Just the opposite. Water proved to be more often the source of cooperation rather than that of conflict. So here we have again an excellent means of building peace. Water as a peace builder, water as a, as a medium that can facilitate cooperation, cooperation among nations who share the same resource, cooperation among the various sectors who share the same resource, and cooperation among the users, uh, because there is plenty of water available. It all depends upon how we are building up our